James Mwangi is my guest tonight. Daktari, good to see you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming, sir. Nashkuru sana. Congratulations and happy 35 years. Thank you. And you've been there all 35 years? 30. <laughs> Out of the 35. Right. <laughs> okay, Daktari, look, let's face it, huh? They laughed at you people in the beginning. They said this East African building society, whatever, this, this thing will never work. And they laughed at you. They said, How can you bank the unbanked? And 35 years later, Daktari, 14 and a half million customers and counting. You're in nine African countries and counting. 700 billion balance sheet. What? 700 billion. billion. Daktari, what do you say to those people now? No, I think uh, I may not want to speak to those one, but I want to speak to all those watching us today that any of the dreams they harbor are valid oh, and they should never uh, be detracted. They should really get focused on what they want to achieve. Yeah. Equity is more of a story of determination and passion. But let's face it, Dr. it must have been tough in the beginning. Certainly. We were technically insolvent. Uh, we had accumulated losses of 33 million shillings against a capital of 1 million. So we were out of pocket by 33 million shillings. And you didn't give up. I mean, did, <laughs> that's panic in any language. And Jeff, loans were only 12 million and deposits only 22 million. So essentially, um, it couldn't be worse. Yeah. And so whatever circumstances and situation one finds themselves in, I think the encouragement is that uh, with the time, uh, laser focus, you can easily get out of any situation. But Dr. Tari, 33 million in the red, that's enough to cause a huge panic. I mean, you weren't distracted, you weren't? You didn't think, oh goodness, what have we done? Let's shut this thing down. We focused on our dream and uh, held to the hope that we had that we could make. Sometimes we get detracted by that which doesn't work instead of focusing on what we intend to make work. Mm. What was the turnaround, Dr. Ari? What think, year? Year three, year four? Uh, the turnaround happened on the second year. For the first time uh, after 11 years, we made a profit uh, of just 301,000. And that gave us uh, the first uh, signal that uh, all was not lost and that we could bail ourselves out. Another three years, oh, we felt, yeah, we now are in comfortable zone. And on the fifth year, we were able to write off uh, the accumulated losses. And the journey of building uh, our capital started. Good Lord. Yeah. Look, and, and when you think of the things that people could do to get a loan, for instance. Okay, minimum was 500 shilling loan back then, right? Yeah. You could put your cow as collateral. You, you could put your uh, bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you could go to your pastor and ask for a guarantee. From your pastor? From your pastor. Guy. It's called social capital, Jeff. Oh. Your friends could guarantee you. And more importantly, in some communities, we realize the paternal uncle is very central in the lives of young people. And you would so, allow that? And you could allow the paternal uncle to guarantee. And the basis is really the most respected person within the family. Yeah by the children, so they don't want to distance themselves. So essentially, we traded on social capital, the network that you had, we, the guarantee mechanism, the group dynamics was very, very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And let's face it, Dr. the mobile banking, that mobile bank at the marketplace, that was a game changer. Let's say it was a game changer. That's true. Uh, I think uh, we today defile it as uh, mobile on four wheels, just to differentiate it from the mobile phone banking. Mm -hmm. because, but essentially, it meant uh, taking banking services to where the people were. Yeah. Uh, and it was out of the realization that uh, the cost of accessing the bank was higher than the charges the bank was charging. The public transport, the time required, uh, maybe a day to be spent uh, to go to the bank, uh, then to and fro, maybe 500 shillings, and yet you'd only be charged uh, 50 shillings with the draw charge. So essentially you are spending 10 times more to reach the bank. Mm -hmm. And we said, why don't we take uh, the bank uh, to the people? Essentially, that was the genesis of uh, agency banking. Yes. We realized mobile was once a week.
But if we used uh, the shopkeepers as agents, we would be able to deliver banking seven days uh, a week. Mm -hmm. So we build on that. And eventually, then uh, we put it on uh, the mobile phone, and it became a 24-hour service. You have your money, whatever you are, whatever time. Dr. Terry, personally, did you think it would be where it is, the equity bank, the, the way it grew? Do you think it would have grown 35 years later to what it is? Uh, we had hope, but uh, we never saw what equity would ever become. Uh, equity, as uh, we essentially realized later, became more of a movement. And it's very difficult to predict uh, uh, the direction a movement uh, would take. We, uh, the growth is inspired by the asp individual aspirations and dreams. As people seek to fulfill their dreams, uh, the aggregate becomes bigger and bigger. The more the people become ambitious, the larger equity becomes. So we could never quantify individual dreams. Mm -hmm and aggregate them and say this is what it will be. But truly today, we can say, based on our experience, we are certain next year uh, we'll uh, breach the trillion shilling balance sheet. You're gonna breach it? We'll breach it. But look, Dr. Ari, let's face it. In this day and age where banks are merging, KCB swallowed National Bank of Kenya, uh, what was CBA merged with NIC to form NCBA, they're merging, they're growing bigger. But you all, Munafate yo mutaratara, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> eh? Jeff, there are two methods of growing, organically or through uh, uh, mergers and acquisitions. As you build your capability and competence, as you build a solid blood, it becomes easier to leapfrog through acquisition and mergers. And of course, uh, consolidation uh, has somehow uh, becomes an opportunity in a marketplace uh, that uh, the forces of the market de uh, determines um, survivors and losers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you don't, you're not scared of the competition? You're not worried about these other banks merging and, 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 and having a, a big base? We've never been worried about uh, competition because we only compete with our dream. And I don't think there is any bank in this country that carries the same dream like equity of changing the lives and livelihoods of our people. So essentially, we attract those who want to make a difference in their lives. Yeah. We don't purport to be offering banking services. We uh, present ourselves as a numbers of transformation of lives and livelihoods of our people. So we are not in competition with any of the other banks. We're in competition with helping our people, empowering them and enabling them to make a difference in their lives and make our country better and in the process our continent much better. Absolutely, Dr. Ari. At the same time, in the beginning, your base was Wanjiko. Right, the previously unbanked. Now, the majority, as you saw, said the other day, the majority of Kenya's population are youth. How does one reach out to that new constituency, if you will? Uh, essentially, uh, Jeff, you are right. We started with Wajiko. Wajiko is the one who needed to be empowered to educate her children, uh, get uh, medical treatment for her children, improve her agricultural practices, acquire assets, and build a better life. As Wajiko made progress in her dream, we too made progress so that uh, we could take care of, uh, of her. But in the process, Wajiko's uh, children, who we were involved in educating, uh, became adults. And they became part of the family. And we needed to provide for them. Uh, and fortunately, uh, Wajiko had five kids. <laughs> so essentially, out of uh, uh, one member, we acquired another five uh, members whose average age is 18 years. And essentially, that is why we need to take care of our, uh, of our children. Equity is a community bank. It's a family bank. So it must provide for the grandfather, the father, uh, the daughters, and the grandchildren. And also, preferably the grandchildren. And each generation have different demands, tastes, and preferences. Mm -hmm. And their focus is different. So at the moment, uh, we are saying we took care of uh, um, our parents very well. We have looked uh, uh, after ourselves pretty well as the entrepreneurial generation. We now need to look uh, at the digital generation uh, Z uh, much better. And we must understand their needs. We can't push them. 
we respond to their aspirations and needs. And we realize this is a digital generation. Uh, they are not uh, like you, Jeff, who is an immigrant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And they are very smart, these kids, Dr. Ari. Absolutely. And switched on. Absolutely. Yeah. And their space is innovation. <coughs> there is uh, space. It's not uh, necessarily agriculture. And if it's agriculture, it's agriculture being done differently as a business, yeah. not as peasantry. Yeah. They're not out to feed the family. They are out to supply to the market. So we must uh, be astute to that reality and fine-tune ourselves and respond uh, to their needs. Mm -hmm. Their aspirations are very different. Mm -hmm. uh, their farms are m uh, most in the digital space. They are in the global market yeah. uh, supplying skills, capabilities, and competences. So we must ask ourselves, they have no cow to offer our security. They have no growing tea. Uh, cash flow, monthly cash flow to offer. It is that cash that they get from an order on payment that really uh, supports them. So banking must respond to them. And uh, essentially, most of them have no office to go to. Yeah. Um, the cafeterias is the, the meeting place for them. So essentially, we must um, number them on their devices. And that is why we have virtualized the bank, moved banking from the place you go to what you do on your devices. So if your office is virtual... Absolutely, the bank becomes virtual. Yes. If we compress geography and we uh, compress time, wherever you are, whatever time, yeah. your cash is there to enable you, at, uh, one, to support your lifestyle, and two, uh, to enable you to fulfill your dreams wow. and to allow you to interact and lead it with others. Yeah. Doctor, before we take our first break, uh, quick, real quick, um, even your logo changed as you relaunched your 35th year. Your logo, it used to be a, a house with a roof and that was equity. Now it's just a roof. Oh, how do you explain that? <laughs> when we started in uh, 1984, uh, it was just 20 years after independence, the greatest aspiration of our people was to move out of grass thatched houses. It was to move out of mud houses. So we wanted to inspire that generation. And what they really valued most was a roof over the head of their families. They wanted to show stability. As we moved on, the next generation wanted to create wealth. They wanted to change the continent. The narrative of a poor continent is what really is confronting this generation and because we are now in a global market that time our uh, exposure was purely the village you wanted to look better than the next person in the village now our children must look better than the children in russia and the u.s mm -hmm. they in that global uh, sphere so we must inspire them differently and essentially the symbols that we use sometimes becomes physical limitations of our imaginations. Mm -hmm. we, so we said, why don't we remove the walls? And as uh, Eliud uh, later on said, uh, remove the limitations. Yes. Stop seeing the limitations. And uh, essentially what we have also said is let's embrace the world. We are now a global bank. Let's not really live within the house, but if we live in the house, let's open the house for everybody uh, to be. But we may retain uh, a roof of our head. We really still need that so that we have a place to go uh, back to, we have a, a place to call home, and the children feel safe and secure. Wow. So you still have, we need that roof over our heads. And we still need the color of brown and black because brown resonates with our earth. Mm -hmm. And that is where most of our ivory would come from yeah. uh, as a basic resource. And of course, our complexion. We should really be proud as a, uh, as a lace and uh, show with the pride that we don't mind. It's our identity. Black is beautiful. Black is beautiful. Dr. Ari, I want to take a break, come back. And I'm glad you mentioned Eliud Kipchoge because what he has done was just incredible. A quick comment about... But uh, Jeff, yeah, go on. every individual can do what uh, Richard, uh, Eliud has done. Yeah. The Eliud had a dream yes. of... Uh, 
breaking the psychological barrier of finishing a marathon within two minutes. Two hours. Uh, two hours, yes. sorry. Yes. Uh, Jeff has also made uh, his breakthrough in uh, bringing out uh, JK Life mm -hmm. as, as a leader program. We, you inspire us. We are demand. Mm -hmm. And some of us is when we grow old, yes. we want to be like a girl. <laughs> so essentially, yes. you have also yes. lived your dream. Dr. Terry, as inspired. have you, 35 years later. In fact, I want to talk about something else, which is wings to fly, something that's very close to your heart. You are changing a whole generation. I don't think people that out there realize there's going to be a generation in 10, 15 years' time that are going to take, a, going to take over this. I can feel it, and it's because of Wings to Fly. We'll talk about that. We are talking with my good friend, Dr. James Mwangi. He's the CEO of Equity Group. Equity, are you a member? <laughs> 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 Keep tweeting at Koinanga Jeff at Citizen TV Kenya. Hashtag is JK Live. JK Live takes a break. Plenty more ahead with Daktari in a moment.